Now, uh, one question that I often ask uh, people during a review, 11 people are at a party, each pe person shakes hands with each of the others. What is the total number of handshakes? Um, a really kind of a cool question. Um, and, of course, that deserves some explanation as to what's going on. So what I do is um, I often talk about um, a simpler case. You know, you try to simplify this a little bit. And instead of talking about 11 people at a party, sometimes it's useful to reduce the problem set down a little bit and try a simpler version of the same problem. And, you know, y you might want to you might want to consider doing that uh, once in a while whenever you're stuck. And this is true with any problem you find in this course. You might want to find a, a simpler version of a problem, work with that, and then and then you might understand actually what uh, the more complicated version of the problem was getting at. Well, let's say that five people are at a party. And these five people are represented by these dots. And I'm calling them A, B, C, D, E. No, I'm not even calling them points, I'm just calling them dots. Okay, so this this is um, even a lower level <laughs> than I would even um, do normally. So, uh, oh, excuse me. Anyway, let's uh, say that A, um, what was the rest of the problem, by the way? If we look at the rest of the problem, each person shakes hands with each of the others. Now, if each person shakes hands with each of the others, uh, what we really mean by that is that they shake hands exactly once. Like, if I shake hands with you, that is really a handshake for you, too. So it's a handshake for me and a handshake for you. And that can be symbolized as just a single line joining me to you, like that. So if I shake hands with, if A shakes hands with B, then B shakes hands with A. And again, this is just reasonable. You're, and that this is uh, true for a lot of things in this course. You you basically apply very commonsensical things about the world around you. Um, the the rules don't change just because um, this happens to be a math course. So A shakes hands with B, C, D, and E. That's a total of four handshakes. Now. If we if it if it's B's turn now to initiate handshakes, well B has already shaken hands with A, but hasn't shaken hands with anyone else, and so can shake hands with B, D, and E. Notice that A does not shake hands with himself. You and B does not shake hands with himself. This no such thing. It doesn't make sense. So now let's go to C. C's turn to shake hands. He's already shaken hands with B. He's already shaken hands with A. So, having that taken care of, there's only two more handshakes, and that's with D and E. Um, let's just try to make that a little straighter. And um, now, if it's D's turn to shake hands, D has shaken hands with A, B, and C but not with E, and so there's the one remaining handshake. So if we summarize now, A had one, two, three, four handshakes, okay? B had one, two, three handshakes, C has one, two handshakes, and E sorry, D, has one handshake. If you look at how many handshakes E can initiate, he can initiate with anybody because he's already shaken hands with everyone else, and since he can't shake hands with himself, and that would look awfully, awfully weird, um, then the total number of handshakes from E is zero. So how many handshakes are there to answer this reduced form of the question? Well, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. Okay, so 
using that principle then, if we take the number of people in the room to be 11, notice that in when there were five people in the room, the number of handshakes was 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Notice it wasn't 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, it was, it was never like that. It goes down to one less than the number of people in the room. So logic would then dictate that when there's 11 people in the room, it must go up to 10. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, and that's a total of 55 handshakes. Okay, that's with 11 people in the room. Now, um, all right. So, um, of course, you can make an 11 pointed star just like I did with five people, and I made a five pointed star. Um, but at any rate, you can see how I used a reduced form of the problem with five people, and I turned it into something I could use for 11 people. You'll find this to be quite useful for a lot of different problems that you do. Um, now, there are similar problems for um, similar ideas for numbers 2 and 3. You, you, you're given reduced forms of a problem here. Uh, diagram 1, Diagram 2, Diagram 3, Diagram 4 and you're told to extrapolate to diagram 12 and diagram 25. And um, it's kind of the same thing. You're, you're told to notice patterns in the numbers. And that's why this is a handout on number patterns. And um, there's a lot of number patterns in this course. A lot. And uh, you want to uh, just sort of wake yourself up to this sort of thing and notice that we're actually um, we're actually doing some fun things like toothpicks you know being used to create uh, arrange this pattern and how many toothpicks are in diagram 12 and diagram 25 so it's it's kind of like these are like puzzles really they're more like that but uh, fun puzzles I hope and um, si similarly if you're counting triangles in diagram 1, diagram 2, diagram 3, diagram 4, these are all reduced forms of some larger diagrams, like diagram 12 here and diagram 25. And you are then asked to describe the pattern in words. So if you, um, so if you work with, if you're able to work with that, then that's great. We, uh, I wanted to do uh, question four uh, just because um, there's some special properties in um, in um, a question like question four that are useful in uh, chapter four of the um, of the textbook. Like we're going to be going into stuff like this soon. Um, so number four, we have one eight twenty seven and sixty four. So all right. So we have numbers like 1, 8, 27, and 64. We're being asked in this question, how many, uh, sorry, uh, what are the sums of the first, by the way, if you look at these numbers, these numbers are all perfect cubes. This is 1 cubed, this is th 2 cubed, this is 3 cubed, this is 4 cubed. So these are like the first 4 cubes of the natural numbers. So if we add 1 plus 8, we find the sum of the first two cubes. That's 9. If we add 1 plus 8 plus 27, the first three cubes, what do we get? Well, that's like 9 plus 27. Okay? I hope uh, you don't need a calculator for this. Now, if we add the first four cubes, 1 plus 8 plus 27 plus 64, that's like adding 36 and 64. And I hope, once again, you don't need a calculator to construe that that's going to be a hundred. You might take a little slightly longer than me to do the math in your head, but uh, you might want to get used to doing that sort of thing rather than lunging for your calculator for every little excuse. Um, so what do we have here? 
the sum of successive cubes look like perfect squares of some sort. This looks like 3 squared, 36 looks like 6 squared, and 100 looks like 10 squared. Now, what's the pattern there? It looks to me like this is the sum of successive numbers, 1 plus 2 squared. 1 plus 2 is 3. 6 looks like 1 plus 2 plus 3, all squared. 10 squared looks like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all squared. So, rather interesting, although, you know, um, um, you, you could actually use that pattern you know, describe the pattern in the sums, and then find the sum of the first nine cubes. Well, the sum of the first nine cubes uh, could be, um, sorry, the sum of the first nine cubes then must be following this pattern. If this is um, the sum of the first two cubes, this is the sum of the first three cubes, this is the sum of the first four cubes, right? Notice the highest number tells us that this is the sum of the first n cubes. So really, if we wanted the sum of the first n cubes, it must be 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n. Okay? That, that would be the sum of the first... Um, that would be the sum of the first n cubes. Okay, so that means some of the first nine cubes. Oh, I'm sorry. I I should be precise here. I forgot to square everything. Um, so the sum of the first nine cubes must be one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine all squared. You know, which is rather interesting. Okay, so. I'll let you work with that.